Alrighty guys, so today I'm going to be revealing a new project that we picked up kind of recently, kind of not. This machine has been sitting for like 20 years according to the seller that sold it to us. Got it for an absolute steal guys. Um, going to show you guys in just a moment but wanted to create some suspense. You guys can see what's going on in the background there, um, all the stuff in the shop. I've been busy trying to get up, get projects finished up and still working on snowmobiles in the hot sun. It's probably 85 here. You can see my face looks really sweaty. It's, it's warm um, in the garage here today. But I wanted to make a video just revealing this project and potentially what we could do uh, with it to get it going. It's kind of a cool piece. Um, first one we've owned of this style of, of machine. So I'm going to quick turn the camera around so you guys can see. You actually, we'll also be working on this Suzuki motorcycle soon. And then there's also another mystery gem hiding underneath that purple blanket there. So a lot of good stuff coming up for you guys. Make sure you stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's get back at the main focus of the video. Check this thing out, guys. KX125. I forget if it was an 89. I think it was an 89. KX125. I can double check towards the end of the video. But this is what we picked up as a project. You can see the top end has been removed and it's been removed for, for quite a number of years. This was sitting in a elderly woman's garage for the last 20 years and she was clearing out a bunch of stuff. We missed the snowmobiles that she had, but we ended up getting this KX125 for super cheap guys. Um, leave your guesses in the comments of what we paid for this whole bike. Um, I do have the cylinder and the pipe and everything for it. I'll show you guys that in a second. It's in a box here. But we never even cleaned it since we've got it. We literally just left it like it was as we bought it. You can see it's all faded, you know, full of mildew and barn dust. It's got uh, Moose Racing purple bars on it. It's got the, uh, I think there's something special about the throttle tube or something. And then it's got an easy pull O'Neill clutch clutch lever and then you can see it might have been raced back in the day it has the rotor cover for the front uh, ufo plastics possibly on it um you can see there was like i think i forgot what it said on the front number or front fender there for something like oh yeah mjw raceway so if any of you guys ever heard of that like i said we're in wisconsin so i don't know if anybody's ever heard of that I assume that was back in the day this thing was ran. Um, obviously, it wasn't any time recently, so. Tires are low on air, kind of fair condition for what it is. Like I said, I think it's missing some odds and ends, but the bottom end does turn over, and it, and, and it feels pretty darn good. I mean, there's a little bit of pitting in the upper connecting rod, but not even, I mean, you can see it's not really rusted or anything like that. It wasn't in an oxidized garage. The intake boot, you can see, if I move this Kickstarter out of the way, it is starting to split. If it'll focus there. Yeah, so it's starting to split around the base where that flange is. Probably should get a new intake boot for it. Obviously go through the carburetor. Looks like it might possibly be missing the air boot or it's just tucked away back there for the carb to air cleaner. Um, the fuel tank and the motor mounts are still here. Everything's still kind of chilling there, which is great. Power valve rod is still still here. So kind of just have to go through it a little bit and we'll we'll find out what pieces we're missing and what we have. How nicely that Kickstarter feels tells me this thing either had a new Kickstarter in its day or it wasn't ridden a ton um, because of how nice and and tight feeling the Kickstarter is. It's not all floppy and, and all worn out and wobbled out. So that's good. Foot pegs are still there, you know, rear brake levers are there, chain sprockets are there. Obviously it probably needs new chain and sprockets. That chain is super loose. Has the old Unitrack swing arm decal still. Seat is in really, really nice shape. I mean, just has some, you know, mildew and just from sitting on the seat cover, but you can tell it's, it's in really good shape. The fuel tank, I believe, is dry. And then I, we didn't know if we were missing a radiator for this side or not. 
we might possibly possibly be missing the right side radiator. Let me know guys if these KX125s from this era, you know, the late 80s had two radiators or one radiator. I haven't looked at the parts diagrams uh, as of yet. That's kind of how much interest and effort we put into this project so far. But just wanted to make a video on it, uh, seeing what you guys would want to see done to it. There is a little bit of damage on the cylinder, and I'll show you that in a second here. That's in this box of stuff. What's in here is the number plates um, for the side and the tank shroud. Has the retro KX factory concepts. Is that number plate? It's actually got a PSI pipe, guys. I don't know if it's, a, I'm assuming this is a stock silencer, but it's got the OG shotgun, you know. But this is a PSI pipe. You can see right there. Super long after the stinger end there. And then just a coolant hose, some hardware, wrist pin bearing, possibly another motor mount bracket, and then the cylinder itself. Looks like the power valve stuff's all there. But there was a ding in the exhaust bridge. I'll try to see if I can get it opened up here for you. You might not be able to see it very well, but there's a ding right above the power valve in the exhaust. Um, we're gonna try to take a, our grinder and a sanding roll and, and just smooth that out a little bit so it doesn't hang a ring on it. Give it a good clean up and hone job and get a new piston for it. Uh, this piston, you can tell, got beat up pretty bad. It's standard bore, so that's good. But obviously, we don't know the cause of the failure. You know, do we have an air leak somewhere um, in the bottom end? You know, we, we won't be able to answer that question, I guess, until we get it running and see how it, how it runs and if it's got, you know, symptoms of an air leak. And we'll just kind of have to keep an eye on it. But I'm thinking what we'll do, this is my plan at least, is order a piston for it and gaskets, piston and top end gaskets, and maybe, maybe like a car rebuild kit and possibly an intake boot if I can get one, or I'll try to salvage that one. You know, clean the carburetor and maybe get it rebuilt. Do the top end best we can, you know, a new piston, new needle bearing for the rod. Put everything together. If we're missing a radiator, obviously get a radiator. It wouldn't have to happen right away. We could still run it without that just to see if it would run at all. I have not verified spark or anything like that because I didn't put, I didn't want to kick it over and let the rods slam around in the crankcase. The clutch operates, so like I'm thinking the structural integrity of the right side is good. And uh, everything else, like I said, is something we could fix down the road. But I think we put a piston in it, whatever, you know, Numera or something, you know, $50 or whatever. Put that in it, clean up the cylinder, go through the power valves, clean everything out. Maybe B blast the cylinder or something, clean it up a little bit better than what it is. See if it will run. Then we can go through and maybe do a mild little restoration, kind of clean up the frame, maybe pull the motor out, polish that swing arm, um, maybe do something with the plastics to try to shine them up. You can see that fade, um, lots of years of sun fade there and just aging. So this, like I said, is a definitely a classic bike. I believe it's an 89. KX125. Definitely don't come across these very often um, in this nice a shape and for the price we paid. Can't really go wrong. So I didn't see damage on the cases either from a sprocket or anything like that. It's a little oily down there, but that chain is really, really oily. So I'm not that concerned about, about that aspect of it. And like I said, the bare bones, you know, the bottom end feels good and tight. The rod doesn't have play in the bottom and it turns over smoothly. So I'm just gonna you know, keep putting oil in there, preserving the bearings, making sure that they're lubricated, and then let's get a top end, and then we can see if it'll run. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You know, Is this a good idea to, to stick a little bit of money in it and just see if it'll run? Or you know, do we, do we go the extra mile and, and pull the bottom end apart? I mean, what do you guys think on this? Um, one shot, I'm looking at the shot cover here, I'm just seeing. I still see all the mice debris and packing peanuts and all kinds of garbage in there but very very cool old school like aftermarket add-ons a shorty clutch lever you know these really old school purple bars like a lot of this stuff is was probably from the 90s you know early 2000s 
20 years old at least, all these aftermarket add-ons. A PSI pipe, you know, they don't they don't make pipes for, for bikes anymore, I don't believe. So that's that's an old thing too. But just kind of a cool little little old race bike uh, that that's something we can maybe get back to running condition and, and keep it around and have it as a just a little ripper to, to hop on and take off with it, you know. So that is what we got going on with the KX125. Should be an interesting project. I'm looking forward to diving into it, seeing how bad things are. And like I said, we're not in that much, so I'm willing to stick in a few dollars and see kind of what happens. And if it turns out to be worse off than we thought, we can always part, we can always part the bike out um, and make tons of money off of that because parts for these aren't you know crazily readily available. So I think that'll be a good option. Once again, leave a comment down below, your thoughts on the bike what you guys want to see, and we'll go from there. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one.